Just... What, what do you mean you can make your own key with a file? No, 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 it's more like if you stick the wrong key in here. Right. Oh, Wait for a second! Don't do that. <laughs> Hi uh, Duncan, thanks for coming down. Uh, basically the issue is, my car has got three keys and I don't want it to have three keys. <laughs> um, we've got the ignition, boot and driver's front door. I don't even know what key works in the passenger's door. <laughs> so what do you reckon? Right, yeah. so take your ignition key, yeah. decode the cuts on this key to find out the, the cut pattern for it. Right. And then take the other locks out and hopefully find enough spare wafers to match the cuts on this key to put back into those locks. To, okay, cool. To repin those locks to that. So I have got here, this is a lock set off eBay stand. Um, <laughs> and I think the quality of them is not great. It's like 20 quid for this set or 25 quid. They tend not, not to be brilliant, but. No, so we've got here boot lock. Uh, I think they are the door barrels. Maybe. Door the, handles. And they all come with, with a set of keys as well? They come with a set of keys and with wafers in the barrels, right. obviously. Yeah. The wafers, I think, they're the kind of like the brass, yeah. thin kind of bits of metal that go, and we'll take a look at them later. Um, I don't want to use these because they're crap quality, basically. <laughs> they're made out of cheese. Um, what I also have is a couple of old OEM like VW locks from kind of parts cars or again from eBay. So what I'd ideally want to do is get OEM VW quality locks on yep. the car. Yeah. Because I don't want the... Use a, as the... minimum of aftermarket parts as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing is like just be able to compare like the quality of the wafers yeah. as well and see if the wafers from the repro cheap locks, how they compare with the yeah. VW ones. Yeah. All right, so what do we do? Do we want to like read the key first or should we get the locks off or? Um, it doesn't really matter. We, we get to a point where we need to know the code of the key, but um, that's probably best done when you want to get everything on the bench and all the wafers set out and then we can work from there. So okay. I think doing the grunt work. Doing grunt work, get the, get the locks off. Get the locks off as it stands, yeah. Okay, cool, so roll the montage. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the locks off the car now, the two front doors, drivers, passengers, and the boot lock as well. Um, turns out the passenger lock already works with the ignition key, so that's cool. Um, I guess now what we're gonna do... Well, that's, that's in our benefit really, because it gives us easy access to a lock that's got all the correct wafers for the key you want them to, to pin to all the locks. So what we'll do is, um, we'll take this lock body apart, we'll take the plug out, and then we can take each individual wafer out of this lock and we can uh, we can have a look at how they correspond to the cuts in the key we'll we'll use the machine to decode the the cut code for the key and with that we can check the measurements on the wafers hopefully we can find enough spare wafers that match the same sizes and then rebuild the other locks with those so we can always take wafers out of the kind of uh, little aftermarket providing stuff the, we've got providing the cuts on the, those keys match enough of the cuts on this key okay yes um so Right, let's strip this one down. When you've got the, oh, that's the right key. That, that part engages with the, the lever part of the lock to do the, the mechanical unlocking and locking part. So, take a Phillips out back of there. there. That part comes off. And then there's a, a spring. So I'll take that off gently, try not to lose that. That'll need compressing to put back on. And it looks like the barrel just, what we'll do is, usually when you're doing locks like this, pop the key in, because then when you take it out, it's got all the wafers in one point. It's a bit of a messy part there, but if I just, as you can see, if I take the key out, the wafers are spring-loaded and they push out like barbs into the side of the lock body. 
when it's it when there's no keying. Obviously, if you put a, a flat blade screwdriver in and tried to turn it, it wouldn't turn because of those wafers poking out. When you insert the key, the wafers can push into the the cuts on the key, and they all line up so that it's flush with the lock body, and then that can. And obviously, that part would would turn in the lock if we um, gently take take the key out. That no longer turns until we put the key back in. Um, with the key, it holds the wafers in. Um, you can't. Locksmith use a little tube around these to take them apart and then take each wafer out once. But we're not um, we're not struggling that much. So what we'll do is we'll gently let go of those. You can see the springs want to push the um, the wafers out there. The key goes in like that. and show that, and that sits against that there. So you can see where it would. Uh, it would drop into the different wafers that pulls that wafer side to side. So yeah, we've uh, we stripped all seven of the wafers out of this uh, this the plug of this lock now. Um, they're all a bit greasy. I mean, well, decades have uh, have been used, but um, yeah, they're all still quite functional and they're not very worn. Um, all the seven springs that keep the the wafers in place, and even though they all look almost identical. Um, if you look closely, you can see the depth of the, the slot that's cut into the wafer. The wafer outer edge body, they're all identical because they all fit in the same slot. But the inner slot that's cut into them is in a different position. So when it's in the, in the plug of the lock, it slots into the cuts of the lock and then they all line up to, to be uh, along what's called a shear line. So they're all flat against the body of the lock. Um, and now I think what we'll need to do is we will... Uh, Check out the cut code for this key and then we'll have another look once we know the code and see if we can identify the differences between these wafers. If you look carefully you can see the, see the depth of the cut from that slot to the outer edge is quite a lot more on this first wafer than this second one. I know what we're doing right now is, is re-wafering some other locks to a certain key but um, if we wanted to duplicate this key um, or have this key duplicated, ordinarily um, it would be cut to code. So we'd need to find the code, which is the depth of the, the cuts on the key to make a, make a spare or cut a, a blank spare. I brought a machine along today. This is called a Condor. Uh, these various different machines, varying different levels of uh, intricacy with them, but they all do a similar job. This one has um, a little probe, which can read the cuts in the key, and then a cutter, which if we popped a blank in after that one, would cut the same code and the same profile, which would hopefully open the open the lock. Um, these, I'd say, hundreds of different types of key blades. Um, this one's nerdily known as a HU49. Um, HU is a common prefix with automotive blades, uh, but the VWs of this era used a HU49 blade. Seven cuts um, and a, yeah, an edge cut blade. And just like a, like a multimeter, it, it, it checks for a short circuit, the probe moves in and when it touches the depth of the cut, it shorts out on the metal, it knows that's that depth and then it goes and measures each of the seven cuts. So what we'll do is, knowing that this is a HU49 key, um, there's a little, um, a little guide that lets you uh, clamp it in down to the, the correct depth. And it, when it, it's into the correct depth there, we just screw it in place, make sure it's in tight so it doesn't move in the machine. Key learn. Okay, and then just measures itself on the, the, the clamp so it knows, knows its position. It measures the depth of the key and then it goes to a set position and then it'll go along and probe into the depths where the cuts are. So now the machine's um, read the key in, um, it's given us a code here that's 4113124 um, and that should, I don't know whether on the camera you can get the, the key profile, just more or less matches the profile that it's, it's decoded for these wafers. Um, we will uh, we'll check out the wafers when we, we offer them back up. Okay, okay, so 
it's all well and good having access to Duncan's fancy Condor machine, but it's much more likely that you'll have a caliper in the garage. So let's measure the wafers with those. We've measured a number four wafer, which is the, the depth of the, of the cut, just, sorry if I bumped the camera there, just for that part there. Um, and we've got it as a 4.34 mil depth on that one. Um, the decode that we did had this as a, a number three wafer. So if we just uh, measure that one there, I can try and do it without getting my hand in the shot. Um, there's a 3.72 on this one. It's about 3.7 mil for that one is a number three wafer. Uh, a number two wafer, which is this one. We measure the depth as a 3.12. And then a number one wafer, which is this one. Is a 2.52. When we're re-wafering the new locks, we will just go by the current wafer set to try and replicate that for the for the next set of locks. Obviously, the vast majority of people won't have a machine to reference. So for this specific key, we'll show you that the measurements on the actual ignition key we've been decoding today. Um, we eventually worked out that the code, even though we had the, the discrepancies of this one. The wafer sets in the locks that we're working with were wafers 412, 3124, and that corresp corresponds to the 412, 3124 cuts on this key. Now, we were measuring these wafers, and these are the measurements of, of the wafer part there we were measuring. Now, to find out where those wafers sit in regards to the, 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 the cuts on the key itself, um, if we, I'll just flick over, we, uh, if we offer this key up. From the flat part at the bow of the key, which is the flattest part there, if we measure out from there, these measurements, that shows us the, uh, the actual uh, positions of the cuts themselves. So for instance, we'll measure to the first cut, which is 2.5 mil. Oh, there's close enough. And we can see that it's on that one, it's that deep four cut. I'll show you on the white background, that probably you'll be able to see that a little bit easier. So from there, that's uh, into that first cut there. Let's pick a, I mean, we can go to 5.6, 5.6, just about there, 5.6. From there, takes us to the that next cut along, which uh, if I just flip back was a, a one cut. Now, it just so happens, so I'll go right to the end, the 2 to 22.1 mil. Let me show you where that one is. That's the seventh. Oh, we'll get there eventually. 22.1. And that from the flat part obviously takes us into the depth of that, um, that the four cut right near the tip. Now, this is a great example key because the last four wafers are a three, one, two, and a four. So what we'll do is we'll measure the, uh, th the three, I'll just point with a pen. Three cut, one cut, two cut, four cut. Now if I measure those with a, the calipers, so if we do start with the number four and work in, in order, the number four cut is about 4.2 mil from side to side of the key. The three cut, if I get it right, is about 5.3. The two cut, which is next to the four, I'll just line this up so I should go off camera for a little bit. Let's just line that up. It's about 6.6. .6. And the one cut, which is almost no cut at all, is about seven, let's call it 7.5. We can measure that this way. Is it 7.5? 7.5 mil. So with those measurements in mind, you could take, without a machine at all, you can take your existing key, you can find out from this shoulder part where the cuts lie on your key. And then if you measure them along those, for those seven cuts, you'll be able to work out which way for those cuts to re-wafer uh, to re your lock. Okay, now we know what wafers we need, uh, it's time to take the locks apart, the old original ones and the reproduction ones, uh, and work out if we can make up three sets uh, with the wafers that we have. Here you can see Duncan lining them up on the bench. Uh, we also found something interesting out about the wafers. You will find as well, I know it's an interesting side note, the thickness of the original wafers is, uh, is a millimetre. And the cheap copies is not 
Ah, uh, well, that's saving. It's always about using less material, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Or cheaper processes. Yes, yeah. Uh, that's interesting. So the original wafers, the OEM wafers are one mil thick material, yep. and the copies are 0.8 yeah. millimeter. And I don't know whether you could fit the original wafers in the copy slots. You can. Yes, you can. Okay, so the kind of the new wafers are a bit baggy and You'll slots. flop about in the lock a bit. Yeah. So I, d I don't know whether that would promote them wearing more. I imagine it would. Over would it, time, would it, probably would another it, decade yeah. or two. Would it affect key feel? You know, like like a bit cl crunchy or clunky. In there. Would it feel not so much like a golf, more like a kind of Skoda? Hate <laughs> 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 <Hey>, it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no comment. All right. How about, no, how about less like a, a VW, more like an Alpha? <laughs> we'll have less. <laughs> I can leave you with your locks disassembled. <laughs> now. Uh, Duncan's just got himself a, a newish Alpha, so it's and got, Duncan know. just crashed his Alpha into this, the, the unit outside. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know. It no, I'd like to think of it as you modified the building. Yeah, I've restyled it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we talking about? Why are we talking about WD 40? WD 40. Because so, I've seen the things. Don't put it in get. your locks. Don't put, don't put WD 40 in your lock. Does that, is that, yeah. does that gum up then? Yes, eventually. Right, OK. As you can tell, we were both having a merry old time cleaning and sorting those wafers. Let's take apart the old boot lock now and see what we've got in there. So this is the uh, boot lock out of the car. Uh, we've got this large rod here that was attached to the central locking stuff. And I'm going to undo this screw here. And just be careful because I think there's like a ball bearing and a spring, which helps with the, the detent of this turning round. So I'm going to do this. Yep. Okay, that's the screw off. I think this pulls off. Yep. Aha, that's interesting. So this has lost its ball bearing. Um, just here, it's kind of little three detents or like grooves in the plastic. And this is what is left of the spring and the ball bearing's not there. Um, what I will do then is grab the la, 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 reproduction new boot lock and show you what I mean about that. So I'm just going to get rid of that springy stuff there and in here. Pull that out. Yeah, that was a spring. Um, and the ball bearing is lost in the seas of time. So where's that other lock? All right, here's the uh, reproduction lock. Um, I'll do the same thing and do this top screw here. off and there there's the ball bearing and there's the spring okay so you can see the internals were really badly gummed up in this old boot lock uh, there was only a couple of the wafers moving out past the shear line which is obviously not ideal some of the springs were broken had to leave some out with the screwdriver yeah it was ganky terrid so I got some brake cleaner and a toothbrush out, gave it all a good seeing too. Now I can look at reassembling the lock with the seven wafers that we matched to the ignition key. Assembly is the reverse of what you did to take it apart in the first place. Apart from, of course, we're going to use the wafers that we matched up to the ignition key. Duncan is using a small amount of light grease on each wafer when putting them back into the pin, just to keep everything nice and slippery. We don't want the locks to look anything like that old boot lock did when we took it apart. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, and make sure to pay attention to which side the wafers need to be inserted back into the pin. And don't forget those springs. We used a combination of the old springs and some of the new ones when the old ones were just too far gone to reuse. When putting the wafers back into the pin, you can use the key to hold them in as you work your way along. Uh, this stops them from springing out all over the place. Um, 
also means that once the key's fully inserted, you can check to see the wafers are all pulled in correctly beyond the shear line within the pin. Uh, and then finally, put it into the door handle and check that it turns without any resistance. For the door locks, pay attention to the larger spring and arms that actuate the lock mechanism. They fit on the end of the pin once it's back into the handle. You need to get these in the right place, otherwise the key won't unlock the door properly and the pin won't spring back into the correct neutral position. Reassembling the boot lock is a little bit more fiddly than the door handles. We were missing a number four wafer, so we ended up with only six of the seven in the boot lock. Not a huge problem and easy to rectify later if we needed to. The original boot lock was missing its O-ring kind of weather seal. Uh, we used the one from the new lock. It was a little bit too big, but I'm sure that will settle in. I found the spring from the new assembly didn't fit inside the original metal, let's call it cam piece. So we ended up using the new metal part. Again, not such a big deal, but similar to the wafers, it's kind of interesting to see these slight differences between the original and the reproduction parts. So note, just be careful when mixing and matching stuff. You never know where those small differences will catch you out. parts reassembled and tested on the bench, it was time to put them back on the car. Again, reassembly is the reverse of, you get the idea. And don't forget those rubber gaskets for those front door handles, we wouldn't want them rattling about. Okay, so we've now got the boot lock and two new front door handles uh, back on the car. Um, so with this ignition key that we had before, we should now be able to lock and unlock the car. Same works on the other side that actually we didn't know, but that uh, handle unlock was already keyed or, or like wafered or coded to this key, which I never knew because I never get in the passenger side. Uh, and then the boot as well. So big up to Duncan. Uh, he runs a company called FobFix, which will fix your key fobs, keys, uh, immobilizers, all that kind of stuff um, on a load of different cars. So if you're in trouble with your kind of remote uh, or your car fob, head over to FobFix. Um, he does a great service and kind of saves people a lot of money as well in the process. So let us know in the comments if we did anything wrong or you want to see anything different. Um, we're going to be doing quite a bunch more work on this car and others uh, in the future. So. Check you in the next vid. Peace.